Hi everyone. Welcome to finale for the classroom. Before we get started, I have just a couple of housekeeping notes for you. We invite you to check out the downloadable publisher's choice lists linked on the event homepage. These PDFs are Smart Music series and title recommendations from some of our publishers that are linked directly to Smart Music. We would like to note that all sessions on the on-demand session track will be viewable at any time um, uh, of the day today, so feel free to choose your own adventure. All live sessions will be recorded and will be available on Whova within the week. They will be available exclusively to you until the end of July. We have also provided a downloadable certificate of attendance linked in the description for each live session today. So if you scroll down, you'll see that below the video window here. We have also included a link to this session certificate in the chat. If you have a question that we are unable to answer during this session time, we encourage you to join a community board where your questions can be answered. Finally, please note that we will not have time for live Q&A at the end of this session. After the presentation, once again, check out the community room to join our discussion boards where we can answer any questions for you. And now I'd like to introduce our presenter for today, Ted Scalzo. Ted is a music educator, having conducted wind ensembles, jazz and marching bands, instrumental lessons, and advanced music composition. Throughout his career in public schools, he has been an advocate of using technology to enhance and improve teacher instructional needs. He is now retired from Bayshore Schools and Hofstra University. Ted is currently an education specialist and clinician for Make Music, living in San Antonio, Texas, and performing with several big bands in the area. Thanks for speaking with us today, Ted. It's all you. Hey, thank you so much for the introduction, Greta. I appreciate that immensely. And welcome to all of you here at Connect. Um, it's been a wonderful uh, day on Friday, and we have more coming today. And we're here to talk about Finale. <clears throat> and I'll just share with all of you, Finale has been in my toolkit since version 1.0. Uh, and I have used, uh, yeah, I think I've used just about every other notation program out there. So I've, you know, pretty well versed in, in the products. Finale is still my preferred choice. And by the way, my humble opinion for educators, this latest version is just an amazing um, application. And we'll share with you in a few minutes here my reasons why. Uh, on the screen are just some of the tech um, things that you need to know to uh, enable a, a Finale version 27.2 to be able to uh, work with your device. Those are the tech requirements for it. And the other thing I'd like to share with all of you is we do have a, a Spanish version of Finale um, for those Spanish speaking people who would prefer Finale to be in their native language. Uh, and the requirements are, are the same. Uh, and as a matter of fact, there's a, a gentleman who's going to be doing a video 101 for us, uh, John Nieto. And he's also one of the on-demand videos today. Highly recommend you check it out. John's got some very, very interesting insights into Finale. So what's new in version 27.2? So the first thing, uh, as you're looking here, this is a screen snapshot. And it's one of the things that were uh, improved in Finale version 27.2, and that is the screen resolution on a Windows device. Now, I do understand we're looking at a um, MacBook Pro here, but that is, a, um, I believe, a uh, Windows screen snapshot. Not sure, but maybe not. <laughs> um, Finale is going to allow you to create your way. So the one um, function that I'm so, so excited about, and it's the reason I said earlier that it's, in my opinion, this is the best version for uh, music educators. But the truth is, this new sharing function is for everyone. Uh, whether you're creating material for an ensemble in Italy, or uh, your community band, or your church choir, or a, a, a local string quartet, or your school organization, this advanced music sharing function is a huge uh, addition to Finale, and it is a kind of a game changer. I, I wished I'd have had it when I was doing all my marching band arrangements for my marching band. Would have saved a lot of printing and also a lot of reprinting. Uh, we'll talk about it. The next uh, item that's on the list is standard music font layout. Um, you've heard uh, a lot about this. 
and people have a lot of questions. Basically, Smoofle is just a way of standardizing all the characters that we use to create notation. And the great news is on our old legacy fonts, you know, like Maestro, we had roughly 250 characters. Well, now in a Smoofle version of Finale Maestro, by the way, Finale in the front means it's Smoofle. If it doesn't have Finale, it's a legacy font. It now has 2,700, I think it's 56 characters. So we have way more um, ways of writing our music and communicating it to whomever we're writing for. And by the way, a lot of those are playback things as well. So we just have more available to us within that single font. We don't have to go searching for other fonts. And Smoofle fonts, if you swap them out, you use another um, Smoofle font that's available, you're going to get a result that's going to look the same. It's going to behave the same, playback the same. We revised our instrument list, and uh, particularly uh, in the percussion category, there's been a huge change here. Uh, a lot of instruments have been added, the way they look on the screen, the sounds that they're assigned to, they're all going to perform better and play back. And I have a few um, percussion uh, examples to show you in a minute. And then kind of under the hood is the improvement of music XML. So this improves the way you're sharing your um, documents. Um, it's got more information in it. Therefore, when you share it with someone else and they open it up in another application, it should look again the same, perform the same. And here's a quick example. Uh, you're doing a big band score and it's in a swing style. Well, in Music XML now, when you export in that style, it's going to play back in a swing style. And then there's a lot of little things that have been fixed. There's a list on our website um, if you want to see the details on that. Um, good news is Finale 27 is the best it's ever been. I just wanted to show you very quickly. Um, this is the Smoofle um, symbols, and it's just an immense amount of characters here. And if you look at the list here on the left, um, this is a static image. I can't scroll here, but you, you know you can see just A through H. You know all of the um, categories. So if you're looking for specific performance things, brass techniques, I see in here. Um, electronic music pictograms, whatever it is you need, you're going to be probably find it here. Um, you'll be hard pressed not to. And the thing that's important for us all to see is each one of these characters is in a slot. It has an address. So it's very similar to what MIDI did for us in um, the musical, uh, digital musical uh, world in terms of connecting devices and software and notation and DAWs and all that. So it's a great tool. And um, you're going to, uh, if, if you're looking forward and you're, you're work, sharing with somebody who's doing uh, pieces in using Smoofle, you will want to be Smoofle compliant and share with those people. If you're creating something um, on your own and you just want access to all those characters, you probably will want to use the Smoofle fonts. If you're going to be creating material for someone who has an older version or is not um, Smoofle compliant, you're probably going to be just as comfortable staying with the legacy um, applications, um, legacy fonts. Okay. So what I'm going to do is um, spend some time here on the sharing your music, uh, take you through the process visually, and then actually go in and demonstrate it for you live. So sharing your music, the first thing you will be asked is well, this isn't the first thing you'd be asked. This is what I want to show you. These are some ways to share your music. Um, so this is the typical file menu for export. So if you want a sound file to go out, that's your uh, file formats available. If you have someone who's on an older version of Finale um, and you want to make sure that they can use your file, you can save it as a Finale 2012 file. And then, of course, the safest and best bet is to um, always save everything in Music XML. All right. Um, and you would obviously need to make sure that whomever you're sharing it with has the capability of opening an XML file. All right. So now we're, we're in Finale. I go to the file menu. I go down and I select share. The first dialog box that's going to come up is right here on your left. It's going to ask you to log into your account. If you do not have an account, you can create one here. It says don't have a music account. 
click on it and you'll now create an account. And by the way, you, it's not necessarily going to be a subscription. If, if it'll be for free, it'll, it'll give you the ability to save your materials in um, smart music. In essence, you'll have a digital file cabinet, and then you'll be able to share your music creation with all the musicians that you need to. And here are some of the ways. If you just want to send uh, a link to one individual, you click share privately. If you want to create a public link that you're going to distribute, let's say in a mailing list uh, to your organization or, you know, post it somewhere so they can get access to it then they all will have access to your uh, material that you've created for your musicians. Or you can just click upload only, and it's gonna go into your smart music account and specifically into a folder called content manager. All right, so those are the first two dialogue boxes that you'll get. Once you've uh, made those decisions, smart music or sorry, Finale is going to say, hey, we're gonna move this into smart music. Let's make sure that the names on your Finale part are going to line up with the instrument sounds that are available in smart music. And by the way, those instrument sounds are a set of Garreton library sounds. Uh, and I, I chose this window in particular, because if you look at it, it goes all the way through. But when it gets to that French horn, it's calling for a generic instrument part. So what I would do is I would select that instrument. I would then go to this dialog box, find a French horn part, and say, no, I want it to be a French horn and then click upload. All right. So it, most times it's pretty accurate and it gets it right. Sometimes it's not, and you will have to change it over here. Once um, you, you've got your music uploaded, it's going to give you another choice. You can click done and go back to work in finale or take a look at how it looks in smart music. And this is just an example of um, a, a woodwind quintet warm up that I had uh, prepared for um, some students. And this particular um, page came up and we're showing the bassoon part. It's important to note that um, this people you share that link with, th when they open it up, this is what they will see. It'll be in an email, they'll click on the link. It's gonna open up in uh, the browser. And it's going to have all of these features. Right now, I'm on the display tab. Uh, I wanted to show you that you can actually transpose um, your music as well. Um, but there are all these other tools available to us here. We can look at the tracks. We can record ourselves. We have a built-in tuner, a metronome. So there's all these practice tools available as well. In addition to being able to speed it up, slow it down, add a count off, click on a specific measure, um, create a loop. So it's a really great practice tool, whether you are uh, a beginning instrumentalist, a vocalist, or an advanced musician in the professional world, these are some great tools to work on. Um, so it, it, it's great. And it's in a digital format, and it's going to show up on screen, and we're not dealing with, you know, all the paper. And you can make it so that if they need to print it out, they can download it as a PDF and print it. Okay, so this is just a little movie to show you those um, tools again. There's the built-in metronome, and you can control the volume of it. Here's your playback record functions over here. I'm clicking on the tuner on the right there, and notice it comes up in a separate tab. So you can actually take that tab, kind of tear it off of your browser, and move it to somewhere else in your screen, downsize it, so you have your tuner up the entire time. Great resource and practice tool for your students. And there we are now we're transposing the part. All right. So you may not want your uh, musicians transposing the composition you wrote, but think about that warm up I just wrote. If I wanted them to do it in that key for a few weeks, then move on. What a great thing. Okay. So before we go here, I would like to go live in the finale. So this is um, my first wooden, wooden quintet number one that um, I created for my students. And I'm just going to, we're going to go through that process live. So I'm, I'm going to the finale menu. Okay. I click file and I look for the share button. I'm clicking share. So the first thing it says, hey, you, you got some changes here and you didn't save them. So let's save that first. So I've already linked my account. All right, we won't necessarily need to go through the linking process. So it's asking me, well, do you want to share it privately? I could send it to an individual again, create a public link, 
possibly distribute this through my learning management system at my uh, school or, or university um, or performance organization, if you happen to have one, or, you know, maybe you have a website for your community choir or your church choir and, and they can get their information there. So you could create that link, put it up, and now everybody has access to your music. I'm going to click upload only. And we'll now be brought to, okay, and this is great. It did fine this time, all my parts, all right? So I'm golden. I just click upload. And now it's going live. And I could click done and go back to uh, working here. But let's, let's view it in Smart Music. Let's take a look at it. Okay, so it's opening it up. And if, if I had shared a link to my bassoon player, this is exactly what they would see. And by the way, they have access to all the other parts as well. All right. So now I have it. They can click on it and practice with it. One other feature we all need to know about um, smart music is anything that appears on screen gives us this tool where we click on a note and we get fingerings and by the way i chose french horn for an obvious reason here is the fingering in f in b flat and on a double horn so it, it's a pretty um, neat application pretty neat tool um, if you're working with younger students and they need the assistance of the starting pitch okay and it is accessing that garrison sound um, i can click record it will actually assess me of whether or not i play the right pitch and rhythms I have the metronome, we can have that on, and it will also play my part. So these are the standard tools that you have available in Smart Music. And now because I've linked my account uh, to Smart Music, this is available to all the musicians that I'm going to create this for. So again, this is very, very powerful, all right? So um, let, let's do the one more thing. This, and this is why it's a wow for me. I'm gonna go back to Finale. So I'm, I'm looking at, I'm just going to click done. I'm looking at my part and, you know, I'm feeling like, you know, the clarinet part maybe is just a hair low. So maybe I want to change the clarinet part and I want it to be up an octave. So I, I just use my selection tool and I hit the number nine and um, my finale has flipped. Um, I see I have a, a few slur issues. I'm not going to be too concerned about it this moment. I could fix those, but I'm, I'm going to leave that change. Now I've changed this. So what I have to do first is I have to save it. All right. But now I'm going to go back to share again and watch what happens. It knows it's been shared already. I'm going to update it. Okay. So it is now updated. I'm going to go to content manager. Okay. And right away, it's found it in my content manager folder. And I'm going to click edit because I wanted you all to see this as well. So I'm now in the compose section of smart music. And by the way, there's my clarinet part. I should have fixed those slurs. Apologize for that. But I can here in compose if I want. All right. We won't do that right now. But I just wanted you to see this. So the, my musicians already have that newest file. It's the old file doesn't exist anymore. So just imagine you're, you're a composer and you, you've written it and you send it to your musicians. In the old days, you would print your parts, hand it to them. And then you made your edits and you say, hey, everybody toss out those old ones, pass them back in, whatever. Here are the new parts. That's not an issue anymore. They always have the latest version. And specifically for me as a marching band director, when I was um, rewriting the show weekly, it, inevitably we would hand in the parts and someone would either be absent or someone forgot to hand their part in and they'd be playing the wrong part and everybody else is playing. The, you, you get the idea. So to me, this is a huge game changer, huge time constraint. And by the way, if you uh, uh, do have an account with students, you have a subscription, you could assign this. That's the other thing to know. All right. So um, it's important for us now that we've, we've mentioned all this to talk about Compose a little bit. And I did see in the chat, uh, well, we'll talk about it in a second. So 
what is smart music? If you don't know what smart music is, it's a browser based practice application that has an immense amount of content in it. Um, if you have a smart music subscription, you have access to thousands, tens of thousands of performance pieces that you can assign to um, musicians, have them practice with it. And the, the, the caveat here is those are professionally recorded. They're not MIDI files. Those are actual recordings of professional groups in great time, musically performed, um, in tune, that can demonstrate to your musicians, here's what this articulation sounds like. Here's what phrasing sounds like. Here's how we want to emote this section of the piece. So it's a great tool. Um, as a teacher, you're able to make assignments. The students get immediate feedback um, from smart music where it tells them if they play the right pitch and rhythm, uh, red note, green note, and yellow note. And then of course, you as the teacher will design and assign um, rubrics and create crafted assignments that will um, guide your students to success. One of the greatest things in there is when you send out assignments, you can say that, or you can make it so a student can't practice at the concert tempo. It has to be done at the, I'm sorry, they can't submit their assignment at the uh, concert tempo. They have to submit it at a slower tempo. To me, that was a game changer. The ability to actually force my students to practice this at a slower tempo, that's huge. Because uh, we all know you say practice it slower. And if they do, it's maybe not slow enough. So it, it's just wonderful. Uh, tons of content, you know, please investigate it. Inside of Smart Music are many other applications, one of them being the Sight Reading Builder, but also Compose. It is a built-in notation app okay that allows users to either import edit or create and assign and share this music how do you get to it well from that home screen you go to the menu on the right there that little orange waffle grid and you click on it and then you'll get a menu it'll look something like this okay and it's in the lower left corner it's called compose and you click on compose and you're going to go to the application where I just had uh, that woodwind quintet open. And you're able to either import or actually create something quickly. And by the way, doing this live in a classroom is very powerful. Uh, single line creation, all right? Create from templates. There are built in templates just like we've got in Finale, not the exact same templates, but the ones you're, you're generally going to need or you can import XML. And now you also saw how I can share from Finale directly into Compose. And for those of you that have been saying, boy, I wish this worked on iPad. This is kind of your way to make, make your, your um, iPad work for you. And that is to have that smart music account, okay? And uh, get your creation over and you can continue to work there. And you can save back and forth via XML. All right. So it's important to know how um, the applications are. And, you know, you saw this is what it's going to look like. Uh, this was a, an improv track I created for an improvisation class. All right. So out of uh, smart music back into finale, we're going to talk about setting up a score. So this is the next step in, in most people's lives is I, I need to create a score. And there's a couple of ways to do this. So the first um, dialog box most people see is the launch window okay and i circled um the two um buttons that are probably accessed the most so setup wizard is going to allow you to create a score manually all right and uh, what what that'll do is that's going to allow you to create um the instrumentation you need and then you'll get to choose what document style you want those in and it's going to choose some fonts and custom markings, and it'll do the layout for you. It's going to uh, provide the staff names, the playback sounds, and transposition. And then you'll go through your normal dialogue of what key is it in, what time signature, so on, playback tempo. Templates are different. They are already pre-done for you. Click on them, and you can begin to begin entering in your notation. So they do a lot of the heavy lifting for you. So there's advantages to both of these. It depends on your needs. We're going to go live in a second and, and show those. 
I will say this, um, the existing templates in smart music, uh, sorry, in Finale, are all updated to the latest version of uh, in Finale 27.2 uh, now. And there's 31 new ones. So you you've got a lot of pre done heavy lifting done for you. So here's my suggestion. Take a look at the template. If it's got some, if it's really really close to what you're going to be composing, use it. Uh, here's here's a great example. Uh, you open up a band score and you're writing for your band, but you only have parts one and two for clarinets. Well, delete the third clarinet part and save that template now with a new name. Okay, maybe your name, and now you've got your own template and you can find it all the time. And if you find yourself writing for the same ensemble a lot, you may want to actually make that your default document. This way it loads automatically. Again, saving you time getting going. And my biggest tip for the day for um, all of us that find transposition thinking gives you a headache, um, go to document menu and go down the file, find display and concert pitch and open your score and display it in concert pitch, enter in all your notes. When you're ready to um, review your entries, then just deselect display and concert pitch. It goes back to a transpose score. And you can just check and see if any of your um, ranges were funky and make your alterations. But mo nine times out of 10, e even in the um, uh, concert pitch score, we're all pretty savvy as to what's going to work and, and which way to go. Okay, so in finale, here's the list of the templates. There's 11 band, and it's including some drum corps, nine chamber, 15 choral um, that include barbershop, male and female. I know there's a lot of you that are writing in that idiom today. Uh, four church templates that include handbells, uh, six education templates. These are great for all of those people that are out, uh, you know, writing using boom whackers materials and, and, and need alpha notes. Um, there's some general templates in there that include things like lead sheets. And by the way, six uh, education templates and the general templates, general music teachers, you're going to find a lot of uh, materials there for you. And of course, the guitar, which includes ukulele. Um, the ent entire jazz um, uh, templates have been redone by a professional jazz composer arranger. Um, the, you're going to find the, the chord suffixes and everything are behaving really nicely now. Uh, the orchestral templates, including pit orchestra and studio. Orchestra. So there's a lot of templates to work from there. So again, that tip is look there. If you find a template that's close to what you want, and all you need to do is, you know, some slight alterations of it, that'll save you some time. Okay. And this is another tip now, because, you know, as, as we move on to newer versions of Finale, and we've created stuff back in, you know, uh, 2002, and so forth, it's important to know how do I get my old files into the new. So here is the safest option. The best option is to open the file in 27.2, but do not save it. Export it as XML, then reopen it, re-import it in XML, and then of course, save it with a new name, you know, version, maybe same title, but version 27.2. That's your safest way of opening an older file. If you're opening files from 2014.5 up to now, you're going to be pro you're going to be um, safe, okay? Because those have the extension of .musx. But those of you that are opening files that you've created, you know, from the uh, dinosaur errors, um, you you may want to you know go this route. All right, just to make sure that your files are being um, safe. So before we go into note entry, let's, let's just take a quick look at Finale again. And I just want to bring up the launch window. And I'm going to point out here, we're going to talk er later about resources. Look at the learning center that's on your launch window. Okay, and the topic I just covered, sharing music, it's highlighted there. Take a look at these. If, if you're new to Finale or you're looking for a specific way to do things, there's some really great produced content here for you in short, succinct uh, learning modules. So Setup Wizard, I'm going to click on it, right? And I'm going to 
create a new ensemble. There are some quick ones here if you want to use, all right? But we're going to create a new ensemble. And the dialogue box that's important for you all to see here is um, what style do you want? And notice the two, Finale Maestro and Finale Broadway. So Finale Maestro is the new Smoofle font, okay? It's the one that contains those 2,756 characters. And then the Broadway font, which is our engraved font, okay? If you know that you're going to be creating material for someone um, that's using an older version of Finale or has older um, um, notation software, you probably will want to stay uh, in the legacy fonts, all right? If you're composing for just yourself, just your organization, um, you'll probably enjoy this, the look and um, the availability of all those characters for you in Finale Maestro or Broadway if you want that handwritten look, all right? So I, I, let's um, we'll stay there. I'm going to click Next, and let's just create a wacky ensemble um, with all kinds of weird instruments. So you see, okay, so this is not your typical uh, ensemble, but this is a chamber group that I'm writing for. Now, we have orchestral, uh, choral, concert band, marching band, jazz band, or, or order, order for the score. But this is non-traditional, so I'm just going to leave it as custom. Okay, if I know I'm going to write for this group many times, I'm going to save it as a new ensemble so that when I go to do this again, I, I can quickly get to it. And then, of course, it's going to bring you through the next step to create a title. All right. And then add your time signatures, key signatures and so on and so forth. But I'm going to click cancel. I'm going to go back. I want to load this again. I'm going to go to that launch window and let's just look at templates real quick. There they are. I purposely. Um, unopened my or opened my uh, folder so you could see all of the templates that are available to you there. So um, organ solo, education templates with alpha notes and so on, some church templates, choir templates. Um, so then maybe you're going to do a piece for SATB in Oregon. And there it is, it's loaded. Okay, but maybe you're not doing SATB, you're doing SA, um, T. So you could easily remove, all right, that. We just score manager real quick. I'm going to click cancel. And you just bring up your score manager. Boom. Um, delete that base voice. And now you've got your new score. Save it. And you're ready to rock and roll and start inputting your, your notation. All right. So some quick ways to get your score started. Uh, important to know those differences and the power between the two. All right. So note entry. I'm not going to demonstrate note entry uh, live here. Um, I, I think you'll get the, the point. But the quickest way is to use the simple entry note tool. Um, you're going to simply point and click and put the notes in using a mouse. Uh, the next fastest way is to actually use your computer keyboard, use the letters to put your pitches in and learn the uh, rhythmic values up above that correspond for the rhythms. I'll show you that in a second. And then the fastest way, this is my personal favorite, is to use a MIDI keyboard and my computer keyboard. I'll play the pitches on my MIDI keyboard, select my rhythms with um, the uh, computer keyboard. Uh, you'll find, I think, that that'll be the fastest way going. And memorizing this, um, you know, table here, it's going to be a huge time saver for you too. You know, five's a quarter, six a half, seven's a whole. Um, place the cursor in the measure, you know, play your note of chord in. Some shortcuts that you should know about. If you want to add a sharp, hit the plus key. If you want a flat, hit the minus. If you want it to be a rest, use zero. And just in terms of building scores in general, say a time-saving tip for all of us in the classroom, Get the notes in first. Don't worry about markings and page layout and all that stuff. Get your notes in. All right. And I'm going to show you a really speedy way here in just a, a few minutes. For those of you that um, are looking for other ways to bring notation in, we can go into Finale and just go to open and open, obviously, a Finale file. All right. Or a MIDI file and have it interpret it. Or I can import XML. And there are a couple of flavors of XML out there. Right now, Finale and um, 
Smart Music are both utilizing the advantages of XML 4.0. And then there's some free online resources where you can find a material that's in the public domain that you could possibly um, bring into uh, Finale and work on. There's one more entry uh, possibility here and that's Hyperscribe. And it's the keyboard icon with the pencil. And you see it's real time note entry. So you use your MIDI keyboard, you'll get a metronome click and then you play in your recording. And if you know that you're only gonna be playing um, you know, simple rhythms and nothing faster than eighth notes, you can make it so it quantitizes to that. And you can make it so it records in one or two staves. I will say this, Hyperscribe entry from the first time it was uh, released in version 1.0 to today is a huge improvement. Um, I'm actually able to, with my fat fingered trombone hands, um, get a reasonable representation of what I want by playing in live in Hyperscribe, okay? So I wanna talk now about choral scores. Um, this is not my forte. Um, I'm not, uh, I don't write for the choral domain too much, but their um, first thing that most choral people would like to do is, well, where's the lyrics? It's the lyrics tool, which has just been recently changed. It's an eighth note icon with the syllable la, okay? And you'll find it, in your menu over here. And by the way, that's the way I've oriented my menu. You may have your menu oriented across the top or in a single line, but there is where it relies. Um, things you need to know is that font has all kinds of diacritical markings for the many languages. You can um, add verse numbering if you're going to do verses. And you do that by going to lyrics, menu, auto number. Um, you can type it into the score, uh, automatic spacing. But more importantly, let me have an expert show you how it works. Finale has a dedicated tool to input lyrics into your score. After you've entered notes, choose the lyrics tool from the main tool palette. Under the lyrics menu, choose type into score if not already selected. Click on the first note where you'd like the lyrics to start. The blinking cursor appears below the staff. Type the first word or syllable into the score. Press the spacebar or hyphen to move to the next note. Use the hyphen for words with multiple syllables. If the current word or syllable spans multiple notes, such as in a melisma, press the spacebar or hyphen multiple times until the cursor reaches the next word or syllable. To add the second verse, Click on the first note of verse 1 and press the down arrow on your keyboard. If you need to copy and paste lyrics from a word processor or other text source, use the click assign method. Copy the desired text. Choose the lyrics tool from the main tool palette. The lyrics window appears. If you don't see the lyrics window, choose lyrics, lyrics window. Paste the text into the lyrics window using command V. Words containing multiple syllables must be hyphenated in the lyrics window prior to click assigning. Choose the click assignment icon or go to lyrics, click assignment. Click on each note to assign your lyrics. If you need to make changes to lyrics that you've already entered, choose the lyrics tool. Choose lyrics, type into score. Click on a word or syllable to highlight the lyric that you need to change. Type in the new word or syllable. You can press the spacebar or hyphen to move to the next note. The changes that you've made using the lyrics tool are now reflected in the score. A great example of one of our resources available to you, okay? Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go um, through a bunch of slides very quickly here. This is the universal editing tool. Um, it is the most powerful tool in Finale. There's what it um, looks like. There's where you find it on your menu. Um, you can see on the left, <coughs> excuse me, all the things it does. Once you click on it, here's all of the um, uh, things that you can do, the editing features that you can access from the one tool. 
So it is your most powerful tool. I do 90% of my work uh, that way. Then in addition, there are meta tools. These are shortcuts. So if I'm in the articulation tool, I'm going to memorize quickly. S is for staccato, A for accent, F for fermata. Uh, if I need to do fingerings on my smart shape tool, I'm memorizing S for slur, uh, greater than sign for crescendo, less than sign for decrescendo. So that when I go to input these things, I'm going to show you in a, a doc here real quick how I can get those in fast. Uh, on the expression, we have shortcuts for the dynamics, meta tools as well. So you're going to see that the loudest is one, the softest is eight. If you want to put in a rehearsal mark, it's the letter M. So my point here is these meta tools are really powerful. Get them under your tips. Um, the explode tool, which is also accessible from that selection uh, tool, is the my favorite tool of all time in uh, Finale because it saves me so much time. And I think what we're going to do is let's go live and just quickly demonstrate some of this material. So let's um, close that. Put that away. Let's say, and let's go. Here's a piece, bam, fanfare. So um, I'm in the mass tool, the selection tool rather, um, and I got there by hitting the escape key. You can select measures, move them over. Uh, you can select, par select partial measures, okay, and drop them in. Okay, let me just enlarge this a little bit so we're seeing what I'm doing a little better. Um, I now want to take this and drop it into my oboe part. Let's just take those. So I selected four bars. I dropped it and watched. Oh, nice. My bassoon player is all by himself, and I've got a tubist here. So I'm going to take that, drop it in my tuba part. Look at how it uh, transposed it into the proper uh, key, all right, and range. So it's a huge time saver. Next thing, meta tools. Let's talk about adding some other things. Oh, actually, one more thing. Um, I just selected this measure and I'm going to use my arrow key and notice what it did. It shifted it over. So if you're finding your uh, scores getting jammed up with a whole bunch of 16th notes and you want a little more layout room, you can move quickly in the selection tool, move that around. But let's enter in some uh, material here. So I'm going to select my articulation tool. If I click on it, you get a dialog box with all the articulations. And if I keep doing this clicking and going back to the menu, that's going to slow me down. I've memorized. Remember S was staccato. So I would like um, these two quarter notes to be staccato. So I can click above the note and notice it's putting it below the note for me automatically. There's a faster way to do this. If I knew I needed those two notes short, I could hold the S key, click, drag. And now I've put it on those. If I know I wanted these played staccato and I held the S key down, I would be able to get those into staccato. I want an accent. I'm holding the A key and I wanted this now down through all these notes in the score. Everybody's playing an accent there now. So those are some fast ways to get in those articulations. All right. Um, let's just finish this clarinet part out. Okay. And let's throw a capped accent. So I knew that was my V. I threw that on that note. Now I'm going to throw in some dynamics. So I, I want my melody above to be loud. So I'm going to select one of those numbers. And let's go with number three. Okay. And notice I put it in there. So now my melodic line above is going to be forte. And I want all my accompaniment to be in the mezzo forte range. So I'm clicking. I held down my five key. Click drag. And my dynamics are now there. All right. So a shortcut. If I want to put some slurs in, I clicked on my smart shape tool, double click. It gets me a, a two note slur very quickly. If that's not what I wanted, I can click and drag. All right. So quite a, a lot of um, availability here of power and tool. But let me show you the most important one. I'm going to select these four bars. And now I'm going to hit the number two key. It's called explode. And I'm going to take those notes, distribute them over three staves. I'm going to start with my trumpet. Look at all the note entry and time I have saved. That's your biggest 
note saving um, entry tool tip uh, to date. So a lot of availability, a lot of um, tools to make your, your life easier, okay? So what I'm gonna do is we have to shorten it up. We do have link parts, okay? That's just been in there forever. Um, you don't need to export anymore, just print out your parts. You can get there by going to the menu in, um, and then score manager, command K, get there. This is your tool for um, changing your, your labels of your instruments, changing the sound, so on and so forth. Uh, I actually, you know what, let's go back. Just want to do some performance demo. So somebody was asking about Garretton sounds. So this is not Garretton sounds. Let's just listen to this. Here's that same piece now using the Garretton sounds in finale. Okay, so proof that yes, those Garretton sounds do make a difference. They're huge. Um, while I'm here, I also want to show this to all of my um, music education friends. You're all looking for uh, repertoire worksheets. All right, that's where you get them. You go to File Menu. Um, there's a ton of material here. I've used them in my classroom with um, substitutes when I was absent. So I know we're getting short on time. I'm going to close this out and uh, maybe Greta wants to come back in. I think you probably have some things you want to talk about. Hello. Yes, I do. Thank you, Chad, for sharing these tips with us. Before we wrap up, I have just a couple of reminders. Um, I'm going to drop the links in the chat that I did at the beginning of this session. Um, be sure to download the certificate of attendance. Um, what, that's one of those links. And in each uh, live session description, ooh, a little applause. Um, <laughs> we have also created a short survey for each session. Keep talking, Greta. We hear you. Okay. Please click the rate session button just to take two minutes to let us know how we did. And we have a few minutes now before our next sessions begin. So this is a great time to check in on some of the discussion topics in our community room, grab a cup of coffee or both. Thanks for coming and we'll see you in the next session. Bye folks. Thank, thank you everyone.